hope everyone can hear me as we begin this webinar. Yep. Okay. Uh, my name is Josh Brown, and we're going to cover who is Josh Brown. I'm the marketing consultant for our business information solutions, and I work in, to help a lot of small businesses along the Gulf Coast from Gulf Breeze, Florida, all the way to Gulfport, Mississippi. I am a native of Baldwin County, Alabama, and I graduated from the University of South Alabama, majoring in marketing and a minor in business management. And I also do a lot of uh, volunteer and community activism. I uh, love helping out our community and watching the youth uh, benefit from those activities that we do. Also joining us today is Ms. Kinley Sweet. Kinley, if you want to say hi. Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us. Yes, Kinley Sweet is our social media manager. She provides some effective digital marketing strategies for local businesses within our territory along the Gulf Coast. She currently works with over 20 social media clients on the over the Gulf Coast and has also worked previously with over 50 different companies, different clients locally and nationally. And she also went to my to our alma mater of the University of South Alabama and studied in communications and marketing. So as we get ready to jump in, I'm gonna let Kelly just, if you wanna, if there's something about you that I forgot to tell them that you wanna give. I don't think so. I don't, I think you got, you covered it all. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's jump into how to manage your online reputation. And the first thing is, what companies do you think have a good reputation? And, and we have a slide here to just show just a few, like Chick-fil-A, who has a very good reputation and awesome customer service, Whole Food Markets, uh, Zappos, Zappos.com, Disney, Costco, and who's our last one? Da, 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 BIS Technology Group. And when we, when we think about these companies, we hear the name Chick-fil-A, we hear Disney, we always think of this good feeling, this good reputation that they bring, Whole Foods, Costco, and the service that they provide. Kenley, was there anything that you wanted to add? Yeah, so these companies, these are bigger companies um, that we really wanted to kind of start off to kind of trigger your guys's, your brain to think of um, the larger companies. And of course, uh, we popped our ourselves in there, but these bigger companies, you know, Chick-fil-A, when you hear about Disney, um, Chick-fil-A, their reputation is just so amazing. Um, it's very rare that you hear negative things um, about these about these businesses that we have posted up here. So it's just kind of to get your uh, your thoughts running as we dive deep into reputation management and online your online reputation. And so as Kinley mentioned, we're dive, diving deeper into uh, the reputation management and the question comes up, what is reputation management? And the answer is, it's a way of identifying what people are saying or how they're feeling about your business. And then once you've identified what they're saying or how they feel about your business, for instance, Chick-fil-A, what are people saying or how do they feel about Chick-fil-A? I feel that Chick-fil-A is very efficient and they have great customer service and I will definitely return again. So that is my, that's how I, feel about it that's what people are saying about it and then what steps is chick-fil-a doing to ensure that the general consensus of how people are talking about their business and how they're feeling about their business it in lines with their goals for their company that is reputation management knowing what people are saying and feeling and then making sure that aligns with your company goals and one way that you can always you know have a good reputation or get people to start talking about you or be able to learn more about your company from just a simple Google search is Google reviews and good reviews. Kenley? Yes. So when you think of um, reputation management, just to piggyback off of what Josh said and to kind of put it as simple as possible, it's really, you know, like the practice of, mm -hmm 
trying to shape the public's perception of um, your business. Of course, it's really with anything, but we are focusing more on um, your businesses. So it's really um, the practice of doing that. So when you think of reputation management, you think automatically of reviews. Um, so here is an example of some good reviews. So of course, you know, this is exactly what you want to strive for is to get that positive feedback. So this is an example of um, the fish house. And you can see right there, they have over a thousand Google reviews. So they're a great example of, um, of really capturing those reviews and getting people's feedback. But these are just a few of the five star reviews that they have um, just on Google, on the Google reviews. And you're saying here that they have over a thousand reviews listed on Google and they're yes. able to maintain a, a, a good ranking of 4.3 stars out of five with over yes. a thousand. So their customer service, their ability to get in touch with their clients, their customers, and say, hey, will you leave us a good review? It's got to be awesome. Yes, definitely. And so we're, we mentioned the good reviews, but there's also such things that, as everyone on here knows as bad reviews. And these bad reviews can really hurt your business once they're out there in that digital space out there on the web. Yes, definitely. So here, um, this is just an example of an IHOP. So they have a two, two stars out of five. Um, so this is something that you really want to try and avoid um, because the bad reviews can really, really impact your business um, because like Google, uh, Yelp, Facebook, you can't delete reviews. So I want to go ahead and just mention that to start off. Um, there is no way to delete reviews unless they are um, nothing that pertains to your business. So if it's someone that uh, maybe there is like tons of profanity in it or it is a false review, then it really never goes away. So these bad reviews can really damage your um, your business and your reputation uh, because the first thing that people ask is you can you trust this business so when people see a business that has positive reviews let's say like the fish house and they see all the tons of positive reviews they know that they can trust the business they know that that's where they're going to want to spend money because they know they're going to have a good experience um, and the bad reviews just really um, is the complete opposite of that so you have to ask yourself do you do you trust the business when you look at the reviews because that's really what people are going there to find out yes because as as our next slide even says of how reviews help when we ask the question, do you trust this business? The first place anyone looks when they search your, for your business is on Google. There are, and they're going to read the reviews of what other customers have said. So this yes. is how, as we go through this webinar, we're going to be covering how these reviews can help your business. And even when you get a bad review, how you should combat that review. Yes. So just to touch on um, a couple ways and examples of how reviews can help your business, um, we'll go through just a couple. But one of the ways um, is it actually can increase um, your rankings on search engines. So when you look up, for instance, um, like painters near me or uh, like a restaurant, you will see on the Google My Business section, the ones that have the most um, reviews really are the ones that are going to be at the top because Google can pick up that they are an active business and they are pos they're having positive experiences with this business. So that's one way. Another way is they can actually, reviews can actually drive people to your website. So when people are reading about your business and the experiences that other people are having, they're going to want to find out more about your business. So odds are they're going to click to your website, which really helps bring traffic to your website. And it helps build the trust. Yes. 
for your website. That's just another way of how reviews can help you out. It helps build trust in, in your company and your presence online. Yes, yes. And that is one of the biggest, um, the biggest positives of reviews and the reputation management is gaining that trust and keeping that trust with your current customers and potential clients because eventually the reviews um, will, once you have people go into your website, they will hopefully um, turn into sales. So, you know, it's all a revolving door um, in an endless circle that just continues to go in um, full circle and hopefully will end up with you receiving sales and profit from them. Oh, yeah. And, you know, a lot of businesses, they say that they uh, rely on certain revenues as of certain uh, marketing avenues, such as, such as referrals. And when you go to read a review, that review is that referral to increase uh, your number of sales. It, it also helps you stand out in your marketing. Yes, definitely helps you stand out against your competitors who odds are, are, you know, usually you're going to have a competitor that's five steps ahead of you. So staying on top of that, you know, and looking at it in that way um, and really being the, the top dog in your industry, really um, in regards to marketing, is really a great way as well that the reviews can help you. And then as we talk about these reviews of how beneficial they are to your company, the question comes up of how to get these online reviews. And there are several different avenues that you can take to getting these online reviews. Yes. So first, um, this is probably the most basic um, start is to set up a profile for review sites um, like Google My Business. So Google My Business is um, just, it's free. It's open to anyone who has a business established on Google, which I'm sure most of you do. Um, and if you don't, that is something that we have helped uh, multiple businesses set up. So set up your um, profiles for your review sites. There's also um, Yelp, Angie's List. There's tons of different review sites and most of them um, are normally free just to set up a, a plain, simple yeah. profile. And then, and and then, then mm -hmm. go ahead, Josh. Yeah, and then at, while your customer, your client is checking out or the service is, is coming to a close, and if they're having a good feeling about everything, you know everything's going well, just mention it at the checkout or you know, ask after the purchase or, or the service, or, hey, would, do you mind taking two minutes to go on uh, Google and leave me a review or go on Facebook and leave me a review? Yes, exactly that. And that is, you know, one of the more traditional ways that people um, receive reviews, but it is still just as effective. Also, um, another way is, and this kind of goes with, you know, mentioning, mentioning it to customers or clients um, that may have purchased a service, you can also reach out to your top clients. So this can be people that you keep coming back to you continuously. Um, they are very happy with the business that you run. You can always reach out to them. Um, you want to make it easy to review you. So that kind of goes hand in hand with setting up all of the um, profiles on your review sites. So that is almost like a step after that. And follow up with your customers and your clients if, um, if they don't. Reach out to them. Um, ask them if they, you know, wouldn't mind leaving a review. And if you don't necessarily want to ask them that, you can just follow up with them and see how their experience was because people really care. Uh, they really see a difference in businesses when you do follow up with them after they've purchased a product or um, a service from you. And then you're also able at that point to get the feedback on if, if you need to correct some things within your business, then here's an example, uh, here's an opportunity for that feedback to come to you so that you can take those necessary steps because I've seen where people still get five stars, but it was this little thing that they, they kind of, they didn't like that, but that'll give you that feedback. Oh, okay, this is how I can address my clients and my customers now and, and make sure that they're taken care of. Yes, exactly. And here are 
a big list of, we wanted to make sure we put this out here for you, of, of review sites that are available online or where you can go and, and get reviews. And as you see, as we all know that Google is definitely one of the top ranking ones for where your review should lie. And then there's Facebook as well. And uh, hopefully somebody knows what this third one will be. It's definitely Yelp. Definitely, yes. uh, these are definitely a, a lot of review sites that you can go on, and and I'm pretty sure Kenley, I know this is in definitely in your expertise. So if you want to elaborate more on these sites, yeah, of course. So really, um, this is just a small list of the review sites that are available. Um, the three that we have circled are definitely the most prominent, um, and definitely the review sites that people tend to go and look at more um, but depending on what your niche is uh, there's options um, for the restaurant industries um, there's tons of different review sites and there are other options as well for people that perform services in your home uh, so the the list really is endless but um, if you want to focus in and hone in on three, we definitely suggest Google, Facebook, and Yelp for yes. all businesses to focus on. Yes, definitely get on those three. If you're not on any of them, definitely get on those three. And if you don't know how, we will gladly um, help you out. You definitely need to increase that presence out there. And I, I mentioned a thing about referrals and word of mouth uh, a few minutes ago. And here's a process where you can ask your customers by word of mouth of hey, going to Google and, and leaving that review. In this case here, we, says, we say, thanks for shopping with us today. Make sure you leave us a, re uh, a review on Google. It'll only take two minutes. And here's the point of just making it simple for them to be able to do it. They can just pull up on their phone, uh, your location, by your Google My Business profile, and they can leave a five-star review right there, and it takes them less than two minutes to do that. Yes, definitely a great way, mm -hmm. you know, and word of mouth, we're going to touch on a couple other ways to um, ask your customers for reviews, but word of mouth, like I said, it's just the traditional way, and it still proves to be extremely effective, so don't be afraid mm -hmm. to ask um, ask your customers to leave a review the ones that are willing to will do it and the ones that you know don't really have the time or don't necessarily want to be bothered with it will just go on with their day so it really won't hurt you it'll just hopefully help you gain reviews yes because the, the word of mouth and the referral process where we we tend to associate it with in-person interactions, but it definitely is digital as well. Because a lot of people, you know, you're no longer, with, especially in this COVID-19 time, you're no longer interacting with a lot of people in face. So if someone goes online and sees, oh, well, here's a referral from somebody, you know, about this business being a great business and they had awesome customer service and I love this product about this business and the, the, the manager came and they sat down with me. All these reviews, that word of mouth and that referral process, being out there digitally, it stays out there and it can just drive traffic to your business. And here's another example of how to ask your customers by word of mouth to leave a review. In this, uh, in this case, it says, hey, John, since I got you on the phone and things are going great, would you mind taking a few minutes and reviewing us on Google? I'll send you over the link. And so the first scenario was in person at the checkout counter. And this one is over the phone for, the, for everyone who's you know, doing more, most of their business probably over the phone or so, where you can just tell them at the end of the calls, since every, things are going great, do you mind taking a few minutes to leaving us a review on Google? And I'll send over the link. Yes, it's super a super simple way to ask for a review. And the great thing um, and the reason online 
marketing and your online reputation is so important and so easily accessible is because it's just as easy to send a link to your review site as it is for your um, customers and your clients to leave you a review. So all you have to do is um, you can text over a link or you can email over a link for, um, for your review sites that you're asking for. Yeah, that way you can still have that process going and, and just growing your business. And now we're going to go into more of the technicalities of, of the online reviews because there are certain policies for, for instance, with Google uh, of how you should go about getting these reviews. Yeah, so I can kind of dive a little bit deeper into this since I deal with it um, with so many clients. So on Google, we're really just going to touch um, Google and Yelp's policies and they do vary. Um, they're pretty different. So for Google, they ask um, that the business owner should not offer incentives. So for example, if you, um, let's say you want to get, you know, a good amount of reviews and you want to exchange a review for a discount or a free product, they, um, they do not agree with that. And that's something that you really shouldn't do. Um, it's against Google's policy. So make sure to avoid that. They also really, um, they really want these reviews to be based on real experiences. So when you're offering people an incentive, it kind of takes away um, maybe what their actual experience was because they're really just looking forward to the uh, discount or whatever it is that you may think would be a good trade-off. So try and stay away from that. Also, there are tons of different guidelines for the Google policy, uh, but don't, like I said, don't offer or accept money. Um, so companies that reach out to you, for instance, that say, oh, you know, we'll send you like $5, um, just like I was saying, a discount. Just usually you want to stay away from that because it doesn't mean, it means that the review is probably not going to be authentic. Um, so on Google, though, you can you can ask for reviews. They are not against that at all, but make sure you're not doing it in bulk. So don't, don't ask for 50 reviews a week. Um, Google will definitely pick up on that. They're very smart. Uh, they're a very smart search engine. So they will flag you if they see that you have an enormous amount of reviews coming in because, um, how advanced their technology is. So really stay away from trying to outsmart uh, the Google policy and the Google algorithm because they, um, they're very strict with reviews. And, and there's a note, uh, a bullet in here that says, don't discourage or prohibit, it, prohibit negative reviews or selectively solicit positive reviews from customers. We yes. know we don't want the negative reviews to be posted, but in, the, in other words, do not try to discriminate upon your customers just trying to get the positive reviews off. Yes. Yeah, that's very important. Treat them all as if they're equal um, and really just, and this all goes back to most of the review sites um, policies is they just want real, honest um, experiences so that right. other other uh, potential customers and clients know exactly what um, they could be uh, getting themselves into when they involve themselves with your business. So you definitely want to make sure you don't discourage against, you know, people you may feel will leave a negative review. So there's the Google policy and then there's the Yelp policy. Yes. So unlike Google, Yelp really, um, really kind of discourages asking for reviews. Um, of course, just like Google, they really don't want anybody doing anything in exchange for reviews. So paying for them, um, there are services and people who may contact your business um, that say they can get you a crazy amount of uh, reviews that are authentic. Uh, don't fall for that um, because normally they are just scammers um, and they're trying to take your money. So we really, really press um, the authentic reviews and how important it is to have the authenticity in your um, in your reviews and the true experiences. So unlike Google, Yelp does um, 
doesn't really suggest asking for reviews um, and doesn't doesn't um, doesn't suggest putting them in like mailing list subscribers uh, sending emails for reviews so normally uh, in the sole focus that we focus on most of the time is Google um, so just make sure that there is a little bit of a um, a difference between the Google policy and the Yelp policy. Yes. And then comes the question of where should I put, you know, an ask for a Google review? And the answer is put it on everything. <laughs> yes. You know, you, you want it on your, all of your merchandise. If you have business cards, you have a little strip that down at the bottom that says, you know, review us on Google. If they're walking in, if you're a brick and mortar and they walk into your store, you see a picture down here where it says recommend us on Google on the window of the store, on the door of the store, on your postcards that go out. You can put, ask for that review on everything that you have in your business. Yes, definitely. It, this is, you know, one of the biggest, um, the biggest types of marketing that I think people kind of forget to utilize um, when you, most businesses have some type of print marketing, whether it's business cards or maybe a, um, a follow-up card. I know a lot of services that come to your home will leave you with maybe like a questionnaire or um, a thank you card, but just simply adding um, the reviews, like asking for reviews on Google or Yelp, um, kind of make sure that you don't um, like advertise Yelp, but Google, they are totally okay with popping um, their logo and asking for reviews on all the marketing materials that you probably already have in your business. And uh, one of the best the best tools that Google offers businesses is they actually offer anybody that has a Google My Business listing claimed with which most of um, most of you guys probably do, especially if you have a physical location, you can actually access their free uh, marketing materials to ask for reviews. So I'm not exactly sure what the actual website is, but if you just go to Google and you type in a uh, free review review uh, materials for Google My Business and you can actually download those, print them on a PDF. It's super, um, super efficient because you don't have to pay for the design and Google just provides it to you for free. Google putting all their merchandise out there. <laughs> yes, and it, and it will have your, um, it will have your name on it and uh, the name of your business on there. So it is more tailored to your business. So it doesn't look as generic, which is really neat. It's a neat uh, service that Google offers and it's completely free for any businesses that are verified on Google. These are just ways to, to, to get those reviews in for your, for your company. If, if you don't have a process of where your employees or you yourself are asking that question at the end of each interaction, you can have these uh, review us on Google or recommend us on Google, just laying around in different places, sending them home to their addresses. And then, of course, there's the, there's the digital route that you can take of, you know, sending out emails. Yes, emails. This is probably one of the most popular ways um, companies ask for emails or uh, reviews excuse me so here you can see um, on the left this is actually the email that gets sent out whenever we have um, someone that has completed a project with us if we have someone who has a um, an issue or they call us and put in a ticket with us for our IT side they'll get um, receive this email which it looks very appealing to the eye too as well. So when you include the um, reviews, asking for reviews through emails, there are different sites that you can use to make them look more visually appealing A different software, for instance, MailChimp, um, or maybe you already have automated emails uh, incorporated in your marketing strategy. So if you do, 
you can add um, you can add the review email to kind of follow up and it really lets your clients know also that you value their opinion uh, because that's when you'll receive uh, the best and the most reviews is when people feel like you truly care about how their experience went. And let's just remember that once again, you can't send them out in bulk if you're sending out emails directly to them, but you will want to do no more than 10 people per week. Yes, definitely. 10, 10 a week is perfect. Mm -hmm. So there's these more, uh, more creative uh, emails that can be sent out, but then you can also get the job done with, you know, your plain text emails. Yes. So if you don't have a uh, software that you use for your email marketing, for instance, like we showed before, just a simple plain email following up your with your customer after their experience or um, after the service is done a plain email does just as great of a job you can just also include the link to your um to your profiles so adding a link to your google uh google my business profile right to where they click on it it's just so simple and so easy and uh the plain text just does work just as well as having a more visually appealing, uh, you know, email campaign that we showed previously. Yes, and if your and if your business model also incorporates uh, the phone numbers or the cell phone numbers of your clients, then you can also send them uh, a request for a review via text message. Yes, yes. So they um, there are a lot of different sites, even review sites. Um, so for instance, an example I have and I experienced recently was, um, I think it was TripAdvisor. I booked a boat rental through there and I actually got a text message asking to review my experience with the boat rental company. Um, and I did it because it just goes right to your phone. And we all know that the majority of people are using their cell phones and using mobile devices more often. So if you are a business that captures phone numbers, um, when you capture your client's information, a text message is just as effective as well. And including that short link in that text message makes it so much easier for the client or customer to leave a review. Yes, and everyone uh, who knows me knows how much I, I, I like my car. So I, every time I take my car to the dealership, they send me a text message after I've left, after the service has been completed and, and just say, will you please give us some feedback? And it only takes me a, probably two minutes at most. And then at the end, it, when I leave that good review, they say, would you like me to uh, post this on Google so we can have it in our Google reviews? That text message is very, very effective. For those who don't um, look at their emails all the time, you have the text message. Yes. So there's another aspect of online reviews and it's called the uh, testimonials. So now we're gonna cover on what to do with testimonials. And, it is, and of course, as you see, the mic is right there. So this is the part where your customers are coming up and what are they saying about you? Yes, so you have all these reviews, you know, first you establish your profiles on these review sites, then you're going to um, ask for the reviews in the numerous ways that we just went over. And now, you know, big question is, what do you do with these reviews? How do you use them, um, you know, to display them? So one of the ways um, is displaying them on your website. And we're going to go a little deeper into each of these. Yes. Um, another way is to make a post about them on social media. And you can also use the reviews and testimonials in your campaigns and sales presentations, actually. It's a really great and effective way. Yes. So the first one is showcase them on your website. So now we're going to cover on how you showcase them on your website. And one way, of course, as we have our example of our BIS, Business Information Solutions website here, is to put them on your homepage. 
Yes, so this is extremely an extremely effective way to showcase your reviews and your testimonials. So many uh, clients that we have ask if they should include reviews or they should include a plugin that automatically generates the reviews onto their website. And every time we always say yes, uh, because when people go to your website, they may not know that they're looking for testimonials, uh, but once they are there and read them, they're then influenced, um, you know, more than they were by reading the other content on your website. So putting them on your homepage is great because so many people on websites, it, you know, I think our attention span is what, like six seconds. So, you know, you have six seconds to leave an impression. So, so putting them right on your homepage, one or two uh, is fine as well, is really a great way for people to kind of feel out your business and see real experiences that other clients or customers may have had. Yeah, and you know, and we're not saying put all of the testimonials on your homepage. We're saying, okay, you just got this new one in and it's a great one. Put that one out there on your website. Having that activity on your website as well. And then you can also have a page dedicated to client testimonies and their reviews. Yes. And that, that is, you know, another, it really is just like the cherry on top of putting it on your homepage. So mm -hmm. what you can do is you can put a couple on your homepage and link it to a full page of client testimonials, or you can do, um, and this is a great example. So with our company on BIS's website, there's a whole page with all the, um, with very detailed reviews and testimonials that some of our clients have left us. Um, so it's really a great way to let potential customers know that they, you are a business that you can trust because, you know, if we go back to the beginning, you know, that's what you have to ask yourself, um, would you trust this business? So adding them to your website is um, is a great way to showcase them. And then um, to end that, embedding it from Google or Facebook. So I just, I think I just mentioned this. So there are actually tons of different widgets is what we call them or plugins that you can put on your website and it'll actually automatically um, refresh your Google or your Facebook reviews. So I'm sure you've seen websites that you go on um, and on the side of their website, they may have their Google reviews or their Facebook reviews. So those are normally um, embedded with a widget and they do have um, tons of different free ones and we have access to multiple different um, plugins and widgets that you can add to your website. It's very easy and that way you don't have to consistently um, add new ones or update it because it just does that on its own. Yeah and it, you know it's, it's all about investing in your business and it, to be able to have these uh, features and these abilities on your website so your website is, is being used as your sales tool based off of your previous clients giving you yes. reviews and, you know, reputation management. What is that general consensus of, of what everybody feels or what they're saying about your company and having that portal on, on Google and on Yelp and, and then coming to your website and being able to see this just backs it all up. So they're, they're already, <laughs> they're already sold by the time when they, when they, once they make it to your website, they're sold. So we come from the website and then there's another digital outlet called the social media. So here's another one, Kenley. I know this is all your wheelhouse. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. So a lot of clients that I have or I meet with, um, of some, of most of them say, you know, do you really want to showcase, you know, your testimonials or your positive reviews on social media? Is that really, a, a really effective? Does it really work? And I always say yes times a thousand. Um, when people are scrolling through your social media, because let's be honest, odds are they'll look you up and then they'll go look at your social media. Um, and once they end up there and they scroll through the posts you've made and they're seeing um, highlights, let's just say um, 
testimonial highlights that you're featuring on your page, it just makes it that much easier for people to see that you are a trustworthy business and that you have you have tons of customers that are satisfied. Now, of course, you don't have to um, post them, you know, every day, every now and then, maybe a couple times a month, um, you can post them and even include a link to your testimonial page that you have added to your website. So then you've actually gotten people from social media to your website and odds are they're going to be even more influenced once they see the variety of reviews that are on the testimonial page on your website. Yes. And, and these digital outlets are not separate, you know, from Google to Yelp to social media, all the, to your website, these channels are not separate. They all blend together. And the goal is to, to drive that traffic from Google because they're searching for you. They're on Google and they're going to hit your social medias and they're going to hit your website is to drive that traffic in a nice funnel to your phone or into your door. And yes. these, these are the avenues in which to do it. You, I have to urge you to make sure that if you're on these digital platforms that you're being very wise and efficient with your investments and with your digital marketing strategy. Of course, we can help you um, comb that out. And so the next one, we, we talked about websites and we've talked about the social media platforms. Then there's also the, the campaigns that you may run yes so there are a variety of different um campaigns as we say in the presentation that you can include these testimonials on so they may be short reviews maybe like little snippets um, that you include on your mailers so if you're someone who sends out um, mailers who maybe participates in the Eastern Shore Saver, for example, including um, little snippets of reviews on those is a great way to showcase those positive reviews. Um, also, the proposals, which Josh can um, highlight on that because he oh, yeah. is the one who sends the great proposals, <laughs> um, but adding them to your proposals is also very effective. Hey, the proposals and sales presentations are, you know, when you're trying to sit down with a potential client and you're trying to get them to see the value and just not only the products or services that you're providing, but also they need some backup on, you know, hey, I hear what you're saying, but do you have anybody else who maybe is in my vertical, is in my industry, or, or maybe, you know, somebody, a company that I may know of locally that also has your services and, and having that in the proposal or, or having that in that sales presentation that speaks volumes to your company, to your services and to you yourself. Yes. Yeah. It almost closes the deal. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's a definitely is a, it's a good closer. <laughs> yes, definitely. And um, on top of those three, you know, there's also the seminars. Mm -hmm. um, so for instance, even like now, the webinar, webinar we're on. So if you're someone who does a lot of educational um, outreach and maybe does webinars or in-person um, educational classes, you can include them there, um, your brochures. So really, um, and your eBooks. So really you just have to think of it as a, f a way to advertise other people's experiences and I know so many of you guys are probably familiar with the huge upcoming of influencer marketing so companies nowadays are paying influencers thousands of dollars to showcase um, their reviews of their products and services so when you think of it in a smaller sense this is almost similar to that and it really costs nothing. So these reviews are just um, just as effective as if a business was paying an influencer, you know, to review the product, but it's just asking people for their honest, their honest opinion, their honest feedback on their experience, and then using that to, you know, promote your business and to promote, like, what your business stands for and how 
you know, efficient and well run your business is and how happy your customers are. Because at the end of the day, that's the most important thing is the experience your customers have with your business. And, and you know, as you, as you send out those mailers or the brochures, guide those proposals, whichever one uh, of the campaigns that you decide to go on, you, you know, here's an example of how we formulate ours is what are our customers saying? And there we have two testimonials from two of our customers there. Just some, just a, insight and a look at an example of how you can uh, formulate these on those campaigns. Yes. So our next topic is that bad reputation spreading like a wildfire. You know, we, we see we have our forest here and what does a bad reputation do? It catches off. And it just spreads and spreads and spreads. And some of the statistics are that, I hope this illustration really hones it in for you. Some of the statistics are that one out of three customers post after a bad experience. And even I was um, in a group the other day and, and there was a statistic given out that 72% of customers will share a positive experience with about six or more people. But on the other hand, if the customer is unhappy, they will share that experience with 15 or even more. So that correlates back to that wildfire, how it can spread. So you really want to make sure that in your business that you are and your staff are very well trained on making sure they're delivering on this great customer experience. But in the cases where those one, uh, those very few bad apples or, you know, so maybe somebody was upset with the service that they got or how they were treated. And they, you know, even though you, you and your staffers were doing the best and you were very considerate, they still went on Google or Facebook or Yelp and they still left a bad review we covered earlier that you never want to take down a negative review. And now we're finna tell you how to handle these negative reviews. Yes. Yeah, so this, the negative reviews, um, this is something that really, you know, the lifespan of your business, you may, you're probably going to encounter, like Josh said, you know, one in three people will leave, a bad review um, and really the ones that are happy are normally the ones that are harder to get to leave a review uh, because when people are having a bad experience they automatically want to go and inform people about that bad experience so how in the world do you handle the negative reviews um, so first you really need to read through the review thoroughly before responding so if it's a specific person that maybe um, is a coworker of yours or they um, are someone maybe like a front desk receptionist that their name is mentioned in it you want to make sure that you um, read thoroughly through it and discuss with your team um, about the review to make sure you know get their side of the story of course before um, before you reply and you always want to craft a short, non-combative combative reply. And this is extremely important. Um, I think one of the biggest parts of, um, of the reputation management and the negative reviews is so many people think that you just shouldn't reply. They think the best way to handle it is to just shrug it off um, ignore it yes ignore it and that is actually doing nothing but hurting your business mm -hmm. so i mean that's what what we're going to go over today is kind of help you guys um, understand what the best thing to say is because um, sometimes it may make you angry um, or you may not understand but making sure that you spend take a second and craft a short um, reply is very important and also in that reply, you want to apologize. Yeah. So even if it may be something that 
you know, you may not agree with. Um, you still want to make sure that you are apologizing. Uh, you want to thank them for taking the time to leave the review and for being a customer or a client of yours. And then you want to reassure them that the issue will be resolved. So that's also very important. Um, just kind of piggybacks off of being non-combative. Um, so all of these these um, steps you need to include in your reply need to, in return, not be combative and be apologetic. There, you know, when, as we cover this, and as Kenley was going over this, there's two phrases that my mother always said that comes to mind is, kill them with kindness and a soft answer turns away wrath. Because yes. in, in, these, in this scenario, when somebody leaves a bad review, and you respond after you've read through it thoroughly, you've crafted a non-combative reply, you've apologized, you've thanked them for their time and thank them for their review and for being a customer and reassure them that this issue will never happen again. There's a probably about 20 or more people <laughs> who will read their negative review and spend more time reading your response to their negative review. Yes. And based off of what you respond, they will decide, okay, I'm not going to that business. Okay, I am going to that business because they owned it, apologized, and are willing to make up. Exactly. So now, Kinley, we have the 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 question that we're asking everyone is this a good review or is it a good response or is this a bad response yes yeah, so <laughs> before we reveal the answer um you can kind of see there was a um customer who obviously was not happy um and the hostess in this example replies um and is extremely combative um so they are basically very defensive which is what we say you need to stay away from <laughs> but um a reply like this would definitely be a bad response you don't want to uh, what's what is a good word for it besides um, being argumentative yeah. you really you want to not add fuel to the fire but you mm -hmm. want to put the fire out yeah, we want to de-escalate the situation and in this case um, where this person talks about how super res res reasonable um, that they were trying to be with the customer but you know they they had incompetent parties, seats for the, you know, all these things were going on. They were given excuses yes. in this review and belittling, you know, um, and uh, attacking the customer. And those are things that you should never do in your response. Do not belittle, do not attack, and do not try to make excuses for why the customer felt as though they weren't treated right. Yes, exactly. Yeah. So then, then we move over to a response to a negative review. Yes. So in your, uh, when you respond, this is kind of an example that all of you guys can um, definitely take. Um, you want to include the customer's name. You always want to include the customer's name, no matter what you're responding to. That's one of the tips that we always give our clients. Um, anyways, so here it says, thank you for your comments. I'm very sorry to hear about your experience. So apologizing and thanking them for leaving their um, their experience. This is definitely not the standard of service our customers have come to expect from us. And you norm you would want to share what normally happens. Um, and then you just ask them to please contact me as I would like to make up for your disappointment. And you add, you know, your, uh, your email, your phone number, um, your name. Most people um, it's normally the owners who are replying to the reviews, but getting them, and I cannot stress this enough, adding the, um, adding your contact information and asking them to contact you is the best way um, to get people off of the public platforms. Um, so if, let's say you don't ask them to contact you or you don't give them 
uh, your phone number, let's say like the previous uh, example, what do you think they're going to do? Uh, they're probably going to reply back uh, because at that point they're going to be even more angry. That is the last thing you want uh, because like I said, you cannot delete bad reviews and I can't stress that enough. You cannot delete them. So once they're there, they're there for good. So we're all all businesses are, you know, eventually in their lifespan are going to receive a negative review, but the way that you handle it, um, and this is a great example of how to do so, is so important to keeping your reputation, you know, as high as possible, um, because the way that you respond can also let potential customers and clients know that you are extremely professional, you're extremely apologetic, and you want to know more about why, you know, they had a bad experience. Yeah, that's like a uh, <laughs> being raised of, of what is character, you know, what is your character? Your character is really shown in these harder times where, where there's a customer that's upset, how are you responding back? to that customer. And next exactly. we, we have a example response here for you um, for someone who the customer had a, a bad experience and they left a, a negative review. Now take in take in mind as you look at this re review, it still they still gave them four stars. But yes. in the context of the review is where the, the negative statements were made. So even though you may have five stars, you need to also check and make sure that you address as you respond to a positive or a negative post, that you respond accordingly to that post. And, and the question that I have to ask you is, who's managing your reputation online? Who's answering these reviews? And who's answering these testimonials online? Is it you, the owner, or the manager, or is it someone else? You know, uh, as I've heard some companies say, they have a you know young niece or nephew who's pretty good with it, and we're letting them do it. You know, that is the question, Kinley. Yes, it's definitely um, making sure that you have, um, you know, your whole staff, like what Josh was saying, you know, the owner can't necessarily do everything. So making sure whoever you have in charge of your reviews, and it may even be a company um, like us, a marketing agency that handles it, just make sure that you guys are on the same page with how to respond to not just positive reviews, um, but mm -hmm. negative ones. So this is just a great example of putting in, you know, the previous slide into action, including the phone number, sincerely apologizing, um, but obviously the, uh, the person who left the reviews is going to know that you actually read the review uh, because they are pointing out instances of clearly knowing that they were a customer of theirs. Um, there is certain uh, certain times where you may get a review that is a negative review that is for a different business. Maybe they left it on the wrong business or, you know, a different state. The business was in a different state. You can dispute those. So I just want to touch on that. Um, if it is a negative review that clearly has nothing to do with your business, um, you can dispute those on Google. And those are about really the only ones that you can dispute with um, Google because they are very strict about, you know, being very, um, honest about what is left on your Google My Business review section. Yes. And just to, to give you the, uh, I guess, the meat of this example right here, there was John, Joe H., who went in and, and he purchased a used vehicle, him and his wife, and then he was displeased and disappointed, as he says, that the vehicle needed repairs. And then after speaking with the sales manager, Mark, they took the appropriate steps to resolve the issues that they had and even agreed to provide them with the loaner car while the repairs were taken were, were, were taking place and then the he, as you see the last sentence he said the dealership redeemed itself and i would delete my prior post if i knew how so joe was on there earlier with a, a negative 
<laughs> post and then came back with this post here. And the response from uh, the general sales manager, Mark, he said, hi, Joe, uh, would like to extend to you our most sincere apologies regarding the recent issues with your Ford Explorer. He addressed them by name and then specifically listed the vehicle that Joe purchased. And he said, we have a high standard of quality for certifying our vehicles and your purchase should never have been an exception. We would greatly appreciate the opportunity to discuss this with you. Uh, if you would be willing to talk further, please call General Sales Manager Mark at the number and thanks and have a great day. In this response, you see he directed this response to Joe. He spoke specifically about the service or the item that Joe purchased and gave like, hey, we were, we, this, this should have never happened. That's not how we do business and we apologize for it. And then he gave, as Kenley said, his name, job title, phone number, and wished him a great day. Yes. So the next example is, again, response to a positive review. And this is just like a, uh, a template for how you should respond to a positive review, as we saw in the example of the last one, inserting, you know, hi, Joe, hi, um, John, or so. So there is all that that can be done. Yes, yep, and those templates are for you guys to use freely, of course, um, but that, I think that is, that wraps it up for us. Yes, that Gosh. does, that does wrap, wrap it up for us, and we greatly appreciate everyone for being on here. So the, the, the question is, what should I do next? We have a special offer for all of you. Um, and this offer is a free online reputation consultation where, you know, this offer includes online reputation report and one-on-one -on -one consultation with me. Uh, and we'll just go over and we'll look over all of your reviews and so forth and see uh, how we can best help you and get your reputation uh, in the green. If it's not in the green or if it is, we can keep it going strong and just bolster it even more. This normally is about a $279 uh, service, but we are giving this away for free to all of our webinar attendees. And I know we're a little bit over two o'clock, so I want to make sure that we get you to your destinations, get you back to your businesses. And if you would like this, please feel free to, uh, this free online reputation consultation, please feel free to email us at events at askbis.com. You can just email us there and we can definitely get that scheduled with you and get to working on uh, increasing your online reputation and just managing it, letting you know how it is. We thank you uh, for me and Kenley and all of us here at Business Information Solutions of joining in and we hope you have a wonderful day. Yes, bye everyone. Bye-bye everyone.